what went wrong in this planned merger. Well, I mean, this is an unbelievable turn of events. This thing was done and dusted. Uh, it, was a, it was a story about a smooth crisscrossing negotiation uh, led by the current, by John Elkin, the Fiat uh, family Zion of the Agnelli family, who really had masterminded this, uh, this merger consolidation that had been too difficult for the, his predecessor, Sergio Marchione, to pull off, or for Carlos Ghosn to pull off, for any of these titans of the auto industry. And this quiet, young uh, Italian sort of aristocrat had crisscrossed the world and seemingly put, put everything to bed with the French government, a French car company, Japanese, calmed everyone down and put this deal together. All that was left was the sign off and that should have been it. And boy, in the last 24 hours, things just blew up spectacularly. Well, what are your sources uh, saying it was began behind really, that blow up? Uh, on Tuesday when the Renault, well, so on Tuesday it began with a board meeting which looked like it should have been a formality. But as, as people who do deals in France know, Anytime the French government is involved, uh, things can get more complicated and, and, uh, and you never know how it's going to go. So this board meeting on Tuesday went into Wednesday, went into Wednesday night. Uh, at some point last night, the French, the, uh, Renault asked for an extension for about a week at the request of the French government so that they could potentially vote in favor of the deal. Fiat had already thought that they had pretty much negotiated the things that were needed to you know, potentially secure the headquarters in Paris. Uh, to add certain things to the deal, to sweeten it so that politicians in France could sell the deal. And then it, it seems as though the goalposts started to move again, and Fiat basically uh, called time on the whole thing. The board met and quickly pulled the offer, basically in the middle of the night. Uh, and here we are, shares in Renault are the most heavily down, uh, because frankly, if you're a shareholder in Renault now, you got to wonder that the French government, with its 15% stake and 30% voting rights, could basically torpedo any future for your company. So there's a lot of egg being uh, thrown at the French government this morning. Now, the French, are, the French government is saying they were looking to secure some comfort from Japan's Nissan and that they were, wa they were waiting to basically spend more time in Japan and secure the relationship with Nissan. As you know, that's been a complicated relationship since the Carlos Ghosn saga. Uh, Nissan, of course, mm -hmm. is 43% owned by Renault and it owns a 15% uh, stake in, in uh, Renault. So the French are saying we were just trying to buy Nissan time. Uh, people close to Nissan are saying, uh, we were totally cool with this, so we have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, so really, it seems like the French government just torpedoed uh, what would have been a very, very interesting example of European consolidation but, uh, you know, and you, at a time when Europe is really trying to come together. Uh, uh, Rosh, I also read last night, though, that Nissan was ticked off by the fact that the new CEO of Renault apparently did not let Nissan in on the talks. They knew nothing about it and only emailed the CEO of Nissan a couple of hours or maybe one day before the announcement of a possible deal merger came out and that Nissan's two board members on Renault basically either walked out or simply would not vote on a possible deal. Yeah, and if you remember the TikTok story we did last week on the Financial Times website, we told we said that the whole key to the negotiations between Jean-Dominique Senard and John Elkin of Fiat Chrysler, the two chairmen, was that the secrecy was of the utmost importance. Nissan couldn't find out. And so there was definitely a bit of shock. Uh, in that story, we quoted someone close to Renault saying that the, the trigger for this whole thing was the fact that Renault's own discussions with Nissan had collapsed and that the, the Japanese were behaving at the next level of irrationality and, and they were just done with them. And that pretty much uh, prompted John Elkin to step in and say, hey, Renault, let's do this deal. But Elkin's vision was broader than just doing a Renault deal. He really mm -hmm. wanted to bring the Japanese in the tent and to some extent, it was attractive to the Japanese to have this sort of Italian-American company that isn't entangled in the French state, which dilutes the French state, stay in the company, which gets rid of the French state's double voting rights in Renault. It was somewhat attractive for, for them to get, get this kind of bigger pie created and then figure it out from there, where the French have less of a say. You so know, Carlos Japan, Ghosn, so Arash, it's, it's so, not sorry, sorry to jump in on you like this. Line. Carlos Ghosn has suggested yeah, yeah. that his arrest was part of a conspiracy by Nissan because he wanted this deal, the Japanese did not want the deal, and that his arrest and the charges that were filed against him were part of... Now, he said this before we knew about a possible Fiat-Renault tie-up. Does this news and does sort of the drama around this give a little credibility to Carlos Ghosn's story? 
Wow, wow, that's it's hard to speculate on that. There's definitely two sides to that story, right? The Japanese line and the Japanese state's line is like potentially crimes were done here and we're following the rules of our of our nation, right? So that there's very specific sort of reasons for why they're doing it and they're following the law in Japan. Now that con kind of conspiracy theory line, if you will, has been prominent since the day after his arrest, uh, which, which suggested that he was pushing for this merger. That definitely appears to be true. He was going to consolidate the alliance. Renault had the upper hand in that, and Nissan and its executive teams, which were many of his underlings and were very loyal to him, obviously, throughout for that 20-year run where he basically resuscitated Nissan from, from the grave, uh, they were going to lose out in that. And so there is that line from the Ghosn camp that this was a massive sort of conspiracy to undermine that and to basically um, uh, get him in trouble for things everyone inside the company already knew were taking place. So that's definitely one mm -hmm. side of this. But boy, if you look at this, you have an Italian-American company trying to merge with a, fr a French company, potentially trying to draw in a Japanese company over time. The French and the Jap fr Japanese companies are already at each other's throats. And now you have the Italian company basically just walking away and saying the French are completely out of line and impossible to work with from a shareholder perspective. The people who look bad today are the French government. Yep.